Hi everyone. On April 5th, the Holy Orthodox Church commemorates the memory of Saint Theodora of Alexandria. We often marvel at the lives of some of these early Christian saints and martyrs because of the difficulties that they lived in, the things that they had to face, and the great faith that they showed in the face of so many uh, adverse situations. Theodora was not going to be anyone different in this case because she did live at the end of the uh, third and beginning of the fourth century at a time when the empire was ruled by two rulers, the infamous Diocletian and Maximian. Now, Theodora, living in Alexandria, uh, was someone who had made her Christian faith known. It was no secret. And so because of this, the governor of Alexandria, Estratios, decided that he was going to arrest her. And he did. And he had her beaten and flogged and thrown into prison. But he was feeling gracious that day and decided, well, I'm going to go easy on you and you can go and live in a brothel. Well, Theodora, of course, was a virgin. She was very dedicated to Christ and this was great distress for her to hear this and she wondered how in the world she was going to preserve her virginity in such a situ situation and in fact Estratius even sent three youths to the brothel in order to defile her. Well at that time fortunately there was a magistrate in that area named Didymus. Now Didymus decided that he was going to try and free Theodora in some way so he put on all of his regular soldier gear uh, with his shield and with his sword, and he went into the brothel before the other youths could get there. And he saw Theodora sitting there and said, I'm here to help you, and this is how we're going to do it. So he took off all of his soldier uh, accoutrements that he was wearing and instead donned feminine clothing. Theodora, in her turn, put on all of his soldier gear and quietly slipped out unobtrusively and got away from the place. Now, what we have left is basically Didymus sitting there in women's clothing inside of a brothel. And one of the young men who were sent there to defile Theodora and who saw Didymus go in, walked inside with the intent of ravishing Theodora and walked up and got close to Didymus and then realized all of a sudden something's not quite right here. He was astounded by what he saw and he even thought to himself, my goodness, can Christ turn a woman into a man and a man into a woman just like that in the same way that he turned water into wine he was shocked by this no doubt Didymus was somewhat amused by this but he went and told the youth listen and because he was an honorable man he said you can report this if you wish I'm not going to stop you in any way and the youth did exactly that. He went to the governor and he said exactly what had happened uh, in this imposture uh, that they had worked out. And so Didymus, by the very angry governor at this time, was arrested. And the governor said to him, you know, you have now completely uh, gone against my wishes and you have disgraced your office. And Didymus said, well, I'm going to receive two crowns out of this. The first one is going to be because I was able to help this maiden preserve her virginity. And second of, of all, because I can confess Christ openly before you, because I am and have been a Christian. Upon hearing this, Estratius ordered that Didymus was to be taken out and decapitated, and then his body thrown into the fire. This is exactly what happened. 
but there were Christians that were around who were happening to witness his execution. And they, a, they were able to rescue uh, parts of his body that were not burned from the fire and kept his holy relics for veneration. And it's happened so often with the martyrs in that early age. Unfortunately for Theodora, she was also pursued and they caught her. And at that point, she too was cast into the flames and received the crown of glory for all the things that she did in defending her Christian virginity and for boldly confessing the faith of Christ. This is not an easy thing for us to hear these days. The deception that uh, Didymus uh, played upon the youths that were there for Theodora's destruction is quite exceptional. And one might wonder how Theodora, who probably was a lot smaller than Didymus, was able to get out wearing all of his soldier gear. But if you think about it, the youths who were at the brothel were not paying much attention to Didymus when he went in, just acknowledging the fact that they had seen him. Theodora obviously got out another way, and the ruse was enough for her to get to safety. But then Didymus accepted the complications of the fact that he had deceived someone, and he was not going to lie or to cheat or to threaten the youth at all, but simply said, what you see is what happened, and you can report it, knowing that he was going on to his imminent demise because of this. Theodora, on her part, joined the ranks of so many of the virgin martyrs during that age. Today, we think about virgin martyrs and it almost seems like an anachronism because virginity is not held in high regard in our rather hedonistic society. But back then, it was. The idea of being a virgin of being someone dedicated to Christ and that they are not going to engage in any sort of pleasures of this world, no matter how enticing they might be, was something that was held in such high regard among Christians. And there are many, many of these women saints who went to their deaths before sacrificing their virginity. Today we should look at the sacrifice made by St. Theodora in confessing Christ boldly, even though she was at a very young age, and not trying to bring anyone else into the circle of deceit that was surrounding her with the governor and the youths, and yet attained a great deal of holiness by offering up her life for the Lord, who no doubt foresaw that her virtues were going to lead her to such a decision. And we can't discount Didymus either as someone who sought to help a fellow Christian even though it cost him his own life. Because as the Lord said, greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life 